Are you treating the root cause of your pet's GI problem? Or do you find yourself going back and forth to the vet clinic, spending a lot of money and not really seeing any change and feeling frustrated and lost on the next steps? Well, if that sounds like you, you are in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna show you what may be the cause of your pet's GI issues, what to watch for, and most importantly, how to use diagnostic tools to figure out the problem. parents, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, holistic veterinarian and founder of The Natural Pet Doctor. If you're new here, this channel is all about empowering amazing pet parents like yourself with the tools and tips you need to help your pet thrive naturally. If you're into that, I would absolutely love if you'd subscribe to our channel and join our amazing growing community. So why is this topic so important? And essentially what we find is every single pet, dog and cat will at some point in their life experience GI distress. So you need to know what to do because typically this occurs in the evenings, it might occur on the weekends, and you know you don't wanna go to the ER if you don't have to. And so these are gonna give you some tips and tools to keep you out of the ER, keep your pet feeling good, keep them feeling healthy, and also help you navigate the space if you do have a pet with a chronic GI gut health issue. So what exactly are GI and digestive disorders? Now these are gonna affect anywhere in the body from the oral cavity, so the mouth, all the way through the stomach to the intestines or other organs like the pancreas that help with digestion. So essentially any disorder that reduces digestion or absorption of food is what we're talking about when we're referring to gut health issues. Now, what are some of the different causes of GI disorders? There's a lot of them. And the tips and the tools you're going to gain from this presentation are going to help you with the majority of these because the principles tend to be very similar when we're treating them. Your dogs, if they get into the trash, dietary indiscretion, food intolerances, if they have a bacterial, viral, parasitic infection, they have, if they're not able to produce digestive enzymes in the condition exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, pancreatitis can cause digestive upset, and inflammatory bowel disease. These are just a couple of the diseases that are more common that lead to things like vomiting, diarrhea, upset tummy. Now, once again, these common signs change in appetite. They get really gassy. You may see blood or mucus in the stool. They might get a little bit constipated. This is really common with diarrhea is that they look like they're straining, but it's because there's nothing left and there's irritation at that rectal area. So that is very important to distinguish. Your veterinarian will ask you specific questions based on that information. For noticing weight loss that tends to occur with chronic GI issues, abdominal pain can come alongside either acute gastroenteritis or chronic gastro gastroenteritis and then vomiting or diarrhea. So these are the general vague signs that something is off in the digestion. Now, what happens if these GI disorders go on and on and we don't resolve them? This is when we see things like dehydration. And this is where it's very important to take your pets into the veterinary clinic if we're worried in these chronic GI issues are continuing, and we're going to talk about that. Also, chronic GI issues or just severe gastrointestinal issues can lead to acid base and electrolyte imbalances in the body. We can see things like malnutrition. We can see pain, gassiness, discomfort in the abdomen, and you may notice your pet feels more lethargic. So remember, thinking about GI disorders, we can either have food moving and the ingestion moving too fast through the body, which can lead to diarrhea, or it can be normal where we're getting those nice solid poops, or it's moving too slow and we're getting constipation and we can see uh, toxins and other things building up in the body that shouldn't be in 
outside the body for a long period of time. So there's going to be different views of what does a GI disorder look like depending on the condition that is causing those symptoms. Now, this is important because this is one of the most common questions I get when a pet flares up, when to go to the veterinarian. And I want to remind you that it's never a bad thing to go to the vet to get help if you're worried. So I don't want you to be afraid. You can still advocate for your pets. You don't necessarily have to put them on metronidazole, but it's better to be safe than sorry, because as you can see, there's a lot of different causes of gastroenteritis. So if your pet's really lethargic, they're not responsive, they seem like they have a fever, if they're bloated, there's a large amount of blood in the stool, they're having frequent liquid diarrhea that's just not stopping, they're vomiting and it's not stopping, they can't keep food or water down or in, and they're showing you symptoms that worry you, you wanna take your pet to the veterinarian. Now, when we talk about chronic diarrhea, these are those symptoms, those digestive issues that don't go away. The symptoms reoccur, they're always present. These can be debilitating, right? There's probably some pets here that are currently going through some of these uh, diseases and it's so hard to watch them because they don't feel good. And, this requires testing from the veterinarian because we, would take a, we have to take a deep dive sometimes to figure out why is this happening, what is going on, and how do we treat it. Some of the common causes that I see are inflammatory bowel disease, protein losing enteropathy, and then this, this phrase, leaky gut, which encompasses a lot of different diseases, which are on this page. So diseases connected to poor GI function, there are a lot of them. I want you to remember that gut health is key to overall health. So even though we're talking about GI disease, a lot of these diseases do not seem related. And then what happens is we forget, or we just don't realize we have to look at gut health function and you get stuck in that vicious cycle where you're going to the vet over and over and over again for the same problem. Maybe it's the ear infection or the allergies and it's not clearing up and it's because we didn't look at the gut function. So things like obesity, endocrine disease, diabetes, Cushing's, osteoarthritis, allergies, autoimmune diseases, cancer, lethargy, heart failure, hormonal imbalances, behavior issues, and even asthma. We can treat these diseases by treating gut health. So please don't forget that. And if you're stuck on that vicious cycle right now with your pets, if you haven't looked deeply at gut function, I hope you find some tips and tools through this webinar that you can bring to your veterinarian and get a different perspective on how to treat that disease. Now, there are a lot of causes of leaky gut. And when we talk about leaky gut, what we're referring to is what's going on in that gut lining. We know that the gut lining is only one cell thick. And if there's anything that causes inflammation in that gut lining, it's going to allow food, bacteria, and toxins to pass through into the bloodstream and set up an inflammatory response which is why then we seem like we get symptoms elsewhere in the body. So those allergies, they're licking their paws, they're chewing or they're scratching at their ears. These all come back to leaky gut. Now, unfortunately too, it's a good thing and it's also a bad thing when this happens. We know 80% of the immune system lives in the gut. And so it's affecting behavior through the vagus nerve connection. So that nervous system is connected. We know that inflammatory response, that immune system will be creating potentially more inflammation. And a lot of it comes down to these different causes, things in the environment, things we're putting into our pet's body. So diet, vaccinations, if they're on steroids or other medications that can keep your pets in this leaky gut cycle. Unfiltered water has a lot of toxins in it dewormers, flea and tick preventatives, antibiotics. We know through numerous research studies that stress can actually instigate this leaky gut condition. 
and then also other medications. So when we start looking at all the things in the environment, the cleaning products, the foods we're feeding, what's happening every month, are we using monthly preventatives for flea and tick products or dewormers? Unfortunately, it is going to be creating some degree of inflammation. So when we talk about microbiome, what we're referring to is that ecosystem in the gut. So it's made up of trillions of different types of bacteria, protozoa, fungi, viruses, and hopefully the good guys outnumber the bad guys and they should be working together. So as a balanced gut microbiome, a balanced ecosystem, they should be working together to create and maintain optimal health. So when your pet's gut health is happy, it's supporting immune health, it's maintaining healthy skin and coat, we're seeing a nice healthy weight, their kidney functions good, their heart functions good, they have good emotional behaviors because we're supporting brain function, they're living long, healthy, happy lives with minimal disease. Now what can happen though, for a majority of pets, especially ones that do enter that realm of chronic GI issues, we have this imbalanced gut microbiome and we're seeing digestive issues, skin problems, we have trouble keeping weight on, uh, kidney disease, chronic inflammatory conditions. We see behavior changes, we can see anxiety, we can see cognitive decline as your pets age and it comes back to what's happening in the microbiome. So you may be asking yourself, okay, that's great. That's a lot of information. How do I know if my pet's gut health is off? So there's a lot of different ways that we can diagnose GI disease. First step, this goes for any disease, even routine care. I want you to be asking for at your pet's annual wellness exams, especially if they're healthy and especially if they are displaying GI distress and uh, symptoms, we need to be getting full blood work done. We need to be checking red blood cell, white blood cell counts. We need to know if they're anemic. We need to be looking at kidney values, liver values, protein levels. Those are all very important. So your CB CBC biochemistry panels. Also, if your pet is having issues, any type of health issue, we need to ensure that we're testing for thyroid diseases. Thyroid disease goes missed so many times, and it's because a lot of times we're only checking a T4. And we need to be checking for autoimmune diseases, autoimmune thyroiditis. We have an entire webinar and our VIP member on thyroid disease. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you jump back into our VIP area and rewatch that or watch that webinar and why that's so important. We need to know, is the body mounting an autoimmune response and attacking the thyroid gland? Because the thyroid hormone is essential for so many different parts of the body working well. Very important. We also need to look at urine testing. We need to see, is there an infection? Is there a UTI? Are we losing protein through the urine? Do we have leaky kidneys? Uh, so that, are we concentrating urine? Also, we need to be checking for if there is a chronic GI issue or your pet's going through this up and down cycle where they're okay, but they seem really sensitive. They could have a chronic pancreatitis condition where inflammation is flaring up in the pancreas and it's making them not feel good. It could be leading to things like vomiting and diarrhea, and this can go for both dogs and cats. So checking what's called a spec CPL or a spec FPL for your cats. This can be added on to the CBC and the biochemistry profile, and it's specifically looking at inflammation in the pancreas. Very important to know because then it'll help you adjust diet using lower fat diets, but also then using more natural anti-inflammatory uh, natural remedies to help regain homeostasis in the body. We also need to be doing fecal testing. So anytime you go into the vet clinic, grab a stool sample and bring that in with you because we need to make sure we're ruling out parasites. We need to make sure we're ruling out Giardia. Uh, there's some tests on the next slide that are very important for cats that are also commonly missed when our cats are having chronic GI issues. Now, keep in mind, one stool test may not show parasites. 
So your veterinarian, even holistic veterinarians, may recommend using something like Panicure treatment. If everything else is testing like negative and your pet's still having issues, they may recommend a dose of Panicure to deworm them that covers a broad spectrum of parasites. So keep that in the back of your mind if they're like, let's, this is why we're doing this. But what you can do is you can bring in more than one stool sample from different days and combine them. We don't need a lot. So you don't need to bring in like a huge pound of poop, but you can grab a little bit from different days. And hopefully what we're doing is, is we're sampling if that parasite is what we call an intermittent shutter. We have a better chance of seeing eggs or cysts in that stool sample. So that's another way that you can help make that uh, more effective as a test when you do go into the vet clinic. Now, okay, that was kind of like the basics, right? But what if your pet is having chronic GI issues? So we're seeing diarrhea, we're seeing gas, we're seeing vomiting, we're seeing bloating. It's not getting better. It's not going away. If you have a cat that's displaying these symptoms, you need to be testing for tritrichomonas fetus. This is a separate panel that needs to be asked for at the labs. So bring that up to your, to your veterinarian if they haven't brought that up to you, um, because I have diagnosed numerous cats with tritrichomonas and they don't tend to respond to your traditional medications that a lot of veterinarians use for normal GI upset. Also, you want to be looking at fecal, feline, or canine diarrhea panels. These are going to help rule out infectious diseases. Texas A&M has a GI panel that looks at folate, cobalamin, B12. Um, we'll look for pancreatitis. We'll check for if your pet's not producing digestive enzymes. Also, if you are dealing with chronic GI upset, so your inflammatory bowel disease, protein losing enteropathies, you need to make sure that your veterinarian is testing for vitamin D. A lot of times with chronic GI upset, and also a lot of chronic health issues, that means the health issue has been going on for a long time, vitamin D levels are low. And we don't know, and I don't recommend supplementing unless you actually know, because it's a fat soluble vitamin and we can, we can cause harm. So ask your veterinarian to run that. VDI is a great lab that will actually test for vitamin D, magnesium, B12. They have other uh, cancer screenings too that they do. And they'll tell you how much, they'll tell the vet actually how much to dose for B12, for vitamin D, for magnesium, if it is low. So they make it super easy for your veterinarian to give you a recommendation. And then also the most invasive, of course, is your intestinal biopsies. So if there's concern or stomach biopsies, so if there's concern for chronic GI issue, that's where your veterinarian may decide to go ahead, do the anesthesia, do a biopsy and actually get some information on what exactly is this disease that's causing it, and then go from there. There are other ways though. So this is where, are we having year round problems? Are things continuing? And keep in mind, you can use these for intermittent problems also. So animal biome is a great test that you can use to check the stool sample and get an idea of the general population. Are the good bacteria outnumbering the bad or do we have an imbalance? Do we have dysbiosis occurring that's causing this problem? Nutri-scan saliva tests are also really good for food sensitivities. Now I'm saying sensitivities, food allergies and sensitivities are not the same thing. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. You can also do a novel protein limited ingredient food trial. So if you're worried about the financial aspect of all of this, pick some meats, one meat that your pet's never been exposed to. So maybe goat, maybe bison, maybe rabbit, and that's the protein that they're going to get for the next six to nine weeks. Remember treats, you're, you don't want to upset that balance. And you can actually do your own limited ingredient food trial to see if your pet symptoms improve on that. Also, IgA deficiency can be a, a common problem in certain breeds like German Shepherds. And that IgA is an essential part of the mucus layer in the GI tract. So we have different, we have an entire immune system in the GI tract that's very important at being able to identify toxins and help 
keep those toxins inside the GI tract rather than passing through, say, that leaky or inflamed gut lining. And if IgA is deficient in that mucin layer, then we tend to have more leaky gut problems. And so you can actually do an immunoglobulin testing through Cornell University that checks IgA, IgG, and IgM. And there's certain treatments you can use if that's the case to help boost IgA levels locally in the gut. Now here's some more of those nutritional tests. So NutriScan, um, I do not recommend the blood tests for food sensitivities. They check for allergies, they're checking for IgE. That is not specific, it is not sensitive, it is a waste of your money. And then also remember you can do that limited ingredient food trial. One of the other things that we can do too is we can check vitamin, mineral, and heavy metal status. So this is where doing a hair tissue mineral analysis test can give you an idea of the cellular health status of your pet over the past three months. Your blood, you can do blood tests, but keep in mind that's showing a snapshot for that day that can be affected by any food that was ingested over the past 24, 48 hours. So it doesn't give you the long-term nutritional status of your pet. And one of the biggest things I want you to keep in mind, we tend to look at symptoms, right? Even if we're using natural remedies, we have to look at all the different pillars of health. And if we miss one, we tend to not have as good healing results. So yes, we're talking about gut health and nutrition, but don't forget about how immune health plays a part, how the environmental health plays a part, how emotional health and stress play a part, and of course, how physical health. So enrichment, getting outside, moving, are your pets overweight? All of these pillars come together to create optimal health and prevent disease or help us treat disease if the, your pet has a condition. And I want you to keep in mind, the healing times. And the prescription for addressing any symptom or condition on this inflammatory spectrum or chronic GI disease or any type of chronic health issue is not all about making like instant home runs or quick fixes. Instead, it's the daily wins of making like the right food selections, caring for the body that will help you reverse and heal that disease. But you'll never know when to hit the ball if you don't look for the source of your pet's health problems. So I want you to kind of shift your mindset a little bit. And the question should be, where are my pet's health problems coming from? And this paradigm of thinking about pet health is a whole new way of looking at healthcare beyond that, give me something for my pet symptoms. So that's very, very important for us to shift our mindset, shift how we look at health issues and keep in mind those healing times, because it is very different from conventional medicine where we're used to giving a drug and fixing a symptom and seeing results potentially, especially with steroids right away. When we're using these natural remedies, when we're using food as medicine, it does take time for us to heal. But the difference is, is you're healing the root issue so that the body regains homeostasis and balance. And so where to start? Remember those pillars, don't forget about them. They all play a huge part for optimal pet health. Start with the nutrition, remember that remove, replace, repair. Go back to your R's and think about, is there something that's inflammatory? Am I forgetting to replace something? Did I repair that GI lining? Ask your veterinarian for these additional tests if they haven't run them. So going back at all those different tests I listed, figuring out where are the gaps in my dog or my cat that are causing the gastroenteritis. Make sure you're assessing the environment. So many times I see doing house calls, I walk in and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're diffusing or you have a plug-in that's like emitting these toxins into the environment or you're using cleaning products that have a lot of artificial fragrances or we're using bowls that have chemicals that are leaching plastic and BPA that are creating dysbiosis and upsetting that good microbiome and inhibiting your pet from healing. We also have to look at the emotional side, the emotional health. What is the emotional environment? And a lot of times this means going deep within our own selves and addressing our own stress, because especially for your cats, 
and your dogs, they're very connected to our emotional health. And if we're not taking good care of ourselves, it's really hard to fix our pet's guts if our stress is through the roof. And we know because of that gut brain access, if we're not fixing that pillar, we're going to have a really, really hard time fixing gut health. And then make sure your physical health needs are being met for both your dogs and your cats. Are your cats getting stressed because maybe they need an extra litter box, or maybe they need another cat tower, or maybe they just need more physical environmental enrichment and play each day rather than sleeping all day. Maybe your dog needs to go on a different route to sniff different smells. So keep these all in mind as you go through, okay, yes, we are talking about gastroenteritis, but when we go back to these different pillars of optimal health, we can start seeing where leaky gut is affected by all of these if one is lacking. So make sure to go back through this, to make sure you go back through previous webinars that we've done that have talked about giving you natural remedies to reduce toxins and chemicals and flea and tick preventatives, how to boost immune health and how to detox your pet safely because they all play a part. And when we look at different diseases, there are similar principles that we have to address in order to get overall healing. So if you like this video, it would mean the world to me if you liked this video and left a comment down below, but I hope you found something helpful. When we focus on these five pillars of health, this is where the transformation in your pet's health occurs. If you're ready to learn more and how to implement these into your fur family's life, make sure to schedule a call with me to hear all about our amazing healthy holistic pet for life blueprint we already have many pet parents implementing this information you learned today and they're already getting amazing results but here's the best part you never need to feel alone again since you'll be joining our lifelong program and community with the guidance from me and other pet parents across the world so if you're ready for the next level of pet care, click that link below and make sure to check out all of our other content at thenaturalpetdoctor.com. See you soon.